Hey, Daniel Bach here from jumpscience.com. This is Speed Science 4. In this video we're talking about impulse. Impulse is a physics measure that we have not mentioned yet. Uh, I want to introduce it for the sake of one, reinforcing that top speed is determined by your vertical force production and also to give us some supporting information for a future video on stride rate and stride length. Okay, so impulse in physics is force times time. So if we're looking at a graph of force over time, impulse would be the area underneath the force curve, right? All of this area would be your impulse. This is a calculus concept here. Okay, so uh, what we're going to be looking at is impulse, vertical impulse during sprinting. All right, so let's say that this force graph represents the vertical force that you push into the ground during one contact in a sprint. Okay, and then the area underneath this curve would be your impulse. Okay, so that'd be your vertical impulse. Now recall that sprinting can be thought of as a series of tiny vertical jumps uh, done while moving over the ground at a horizontal velocity. Okay? So let's say that this is you sprinting at your absolute max speed with uh, the best mechanics that you are capable of. All right? Now, to get faster than that, you don't need to jump higher, right? You don't need a bigger vertical jump on each stride. Uh, so you don't need a bigger vertical impulse, right? What you need is you need to be able to do the same tiny vertical jump uh, more quickly, right? So that you can move over the ground faster. So what you need is a quicker impulse, okay? So you need something more like this right so the area underneath that curve the impulse is going to be the same or very similar okay but in order to get that impulse in a shorter amount of time you're going to need a higher force okay and you're going to need faster force production so if you become able to produce the same impulse in a shorter ground contact time that's going to give you a combination of two things when you sprint one, you're going to be able to move over the ground faster, right? You're going to increase your top speed. But along with that, you're going to get an improvement in mechanics. Because since you're moving at a higher velocity, you're going to have to generate more backwards foot velocity that's going to be associated with more front side mechanics, right? So your speed and your mechanics are going to improve together. All right, so as I've gone through these speed science videos, all we've really talked about is pretty simple projectile physics. All right. Now, it's gotten a little bit more complicated because we have a complex object, the human body, that we're dealing with, but the physics themselves are pretty simple. Okay, so honestly, we really should not need to research this. But there is a lot of sprinting research that has been done, and not all of it presents the same conclusions that I've been presenting in these videos. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk in a future video about why a lot of the research can be misleading. But there is research that supports what I've been saying. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the video description and then I'm going to show you the graph right now. What the researchers did is measure vertical force during running at different speeds. They had a sprinter group and an athlete non-sprinter group. Now one of the researchers, Dr. Peter Weyand, he has already explored this vertical force concept and determined that top speed is determined by vertical force. So in this study, they were actually looking beyond just the magnitude of the vertical force and examining the pattern of that force, uh, the shape of the force curve. But a lot of the data in this study does confirm again that increased vertical force production is required to increase top speed. So here we're looking at force curves at different running speeds. The force units on the left axis are body weight. So two means two times body weight, three means three times body weight, so on and so forth. So you see that as the velocity goes up, the ground contact time has to get shorter. The impulse has to get quicker. In order to achieve that, the force has to get higher. 
okay? It is very clear how this works. Higher force means you can get off the ground quicker. With shorter ground contact time, that means you can move at a higher velocity. Now, a couple of things to note here. First, the size of the impulse, the area underneath the curve, right, does not increase at higher speeds. In fact, in this case, it seems to decrease as you get faster. Why is that? The size of the impulse determines the height of the vertical jump, right? Each stride is a little vertical jump. So at lower speeds, you can run however you want to run, right? You can choose to bounce off the ground a little bit higher. You can have a, a longer stride length, or you could have a higher stride frequency. Okay, you have options at lower speeds. So that can produce some variety in terms of the impulse when you're doing slower running. But at top speed, there's really only one way to do it. You don't have a choice. So regardless of the size of the impulse, what's clear is that the duration of the impulse, the ground contact time, has to get shorter in order for you to run at a higher velocity. Second thing to note, in this case, the comparison between the two athletes makes a lot of sense. You see that the non-sprinter follows the same pattern as the sprinter. As velocity goes up, force goes up, and ground contact time decreases, but the non-sprinter is not able to reach the same force relative to body weight, and therefore is not able to achieve the same short ground contact time as the sprinter. So the sprinter has better vertical force production, and that makes sense. However, we don't want to rely on too much comparison between athletes, because different athletes have different bodies, and they run with different mechanics, and that's going to change their force measurements. In this case, everything made sense because there's a pretty big gap between the athletes. But if we were looking at two competitive sprinters, things may not be so clear. A slightly slower sprinter could actually produce higher force relative to body weight and get off the ground a little bit quicker than a slightly faster sprinter if the faster sprinter is taller. Okay. Now there's other factors as well, but height is a big one. So I'm going to talk about this more in Speed Science 5, how research data can be misleading when we try to compare between sprinters or when we try to look at numbers across a population. But to wrap up this video, I just want to reiterate that your top speed is determined by your vertical force production. And this is just physics. This is not my personal theory. This is not me trying to prove how smart I am. I'm just communicating some basic physics, applying it to sprinting.